Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hold on a sec here. I'm going to see if this makes a little bit of a difference. <clears throat> there we go. Got a little bit more uh, juice out of the ring lights. Good evening, everybody. How we doing? Welcome to uh, Friday night. Tonight we're doing a, a finger picking boot camp. Uh, so obviously uh, tilted a little towards the acoustic guitar, but uh, as always, some of these uh, approaches and techniques are uh, also transferable to the electric guitar. If that's all you got, I would encourage you to stick around. But yeah, mostly an acoustic sort of workout tonight. We, uh, we usually change these up uh, every week or so. Uh, one week on the acoustic, one week on the electric. We're here at the same time on YouTube every Friday. So let's get the welcomes uh, going here. We got Craig. Good day, Craig. Back in Australia after two weeks in Washington State. Glad to have you as always. And Riff Rath. Love the name. Welcome, welcome. Great to see you again. Tien in Vietnam. Welcome as always. Larry, what's going on? Ready to do some figure picking after working in slide. Open G stuff. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Tim, what's up? Congrats on the new guitar. That is killer. A PRS Mira. Awesome stuff. I hope you uh, enjoy that for many years to come. That is awesome. Jay, what's going on? J.A. Yes, yes. What's going on? Uh, Theodore, what's up? Welcome, welcome, Scott. Welcome, Steve in New Hampshire. What's up? As always, <laughs> Russ, uh, plus plus one to uh, Dave Salantano's YouTube. Uh, he started Wednesday. Uh, I checked it out. I wasn't able to tune in live, but I checked it out on on Guitar Tricks. Uh, we have all the streams available on the Guitar Tricks channel on YouTube, and uh, looked really cool. So uh, excellent start to that YouTube stream. Highly recommend you check that out. He's got a series going right now for uh, rock and metal rhythm guitar over the next four weeks. Uh, five, it's a five-parter, five parter, and he just started it this week. Excellent. We got HH from Ottawa. Great to see you. Happy Friday. Happy Friday back to Steve. Uh, James in Syracuse. Welcome. Chris, what's going on? Nikki the dog, of course. Welcome. Uh, Larry. <laughs> You're in the right place to ask. I play all acoustic. There you go. Uh, Paul, good day from Melbourne. Excellent. Thanks for joining. MA from Washington. Sylvan Lake for Scott. Excellent. In uh, my home province of Alberta. I love it. Zane, what's going on? We're doing well. Friday, Jake99, what's up? Full stack, Sundara. Start playing ASAP, please. I will do that as soon as I can. All right. Rodney Jones, Angelino in Seattle. All right, in the house. Welcome. Uh, Terry Clark in Florida. Welcome, welcome. Herman from Fultonville, New York. Welcome, welcome. Hearts Family Art, what's going on? Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, for those of you joining for the first time, please expand the description below the video. There are links to a PDF uh, file with the tabs that we're going to go over tonight. And there's also a Guitar Pro file as well if you use that software. Um, one note though, uh, for some of you who, who were uh, waiting a little bit longer than maybe about uh, a half hour before the session, I had to do a quick little uh, fix of an error. So there is a version two of the PDF that you'll need to download, okay? So uh, that link was updated about a half hour ago on the YouTube page. So if you downloaded it and printed it out, many apologies uh, prior to that. But uh, if you get the latest one version two, you'll be good. All right. Excellent, Rad Flying V. Thank you for last, last week's lesson. Much appreciated. Well, thank you. Appreciate you hanging out. Dave Staub from Cleveland. Welcome. Jody One, as always. Welcome. Bev from the UK. Welcome. Excellent. David, East of Beale Street. Love it. And uh, Nikki the Dog, finally, we got Highway Song on Guitar Tricks. So, uh, yeah, glad you're digging it. Uh, that There's a lot of stuff going on in that song. So uh, enjoy it. What's up, Jim Gregory? We're happy you're here. Well, happy Friday, everybody. Excellent, excellent. All right. So, uh, you know, just a quick little primer for finger picking. Okay. Um, try to be as relaxed as you can, right? 
Um, I'm going to just drape my arm over the bout of the guitar here and come in at an angle so that my fingers are roughly just sort of in this middle area between the saddles of where the strings come out and the end of the fretboard. Okay, that usually puts it right sort of off to one side of the sound hole. All guitars are a little bit different, right? Uh, but I want to come in at a diagonal a little bit like this. Um, it's totally okay if you want to anchor. A lot of people anchor with pinky here. Uh, give a little bit of stability. I'm one of those guys that likes to just kind of float on top. There's no right or wrong as far as that goes. Doug, welcome, as always, from Denver. Good to see you. So we're going to start out with a little bit of a warm-up. Uh, exercise one, uh, we've got two little variations. Going to start with an open G chord. Just make it simple. And we're going to get these fingers going. So it really starting on the thumb on the low string and then index, middle, ring. Okay. Uh, nothing too uh, digging in aggressively, but at the same time, not necessarily going really soft, just somewhere in the middle. I'm trying to get a nice tone out of, uh, you know, sort of the fingers hitting here at a medium dynamic. Okay. I always find that this. Uh, your timing and everything flows nicer if you're nice and loose and relaxed, okay? If you kind of tense up a little bit and get a little bit rigid, that tends to uh, affect the timing a little bit, affects your groove and all that kind of stuff. So uh, always try and keep as relaxed as you can. And we're just going to cycle through. We're going to start on the low string, go up the chord for four notes, right? And then come back with the thumb onto the fifth string this time, or the A string, okay? Excellent, Jerry, welcome. All right, good news, excellent. Okay, then we're gonna do the same thing starting on the D string. And that's gonna take you up to the high string on that last pluck, right? So when you put that together. I really try to get the timing of that nice and steady. If you have to go a lot slower, that's totally okay, right? Like, like that, just to get used to the fingers. Okay. Now, if you have to just work on the fingers themselves and you find it a little bit challenging, then just start on one string set and repeat that, right? Until, you know, do that for a couple minutes until it feels like it's burned in a little bit. John, what's up? Good to see you, my friend. Last part of this exercise is that I'm going to switch to a D chord. This time I'm combining a pluck on the open D string with uh, the third finger, the ring finger, on the second fret of the top string. And then come down in your fingers, middle finger on the B string, index finger on the G string. Just sort of end off that exercise with a little bit of a chord change and then sort of switching the direction a little bit. So one more time putting the whole thing together. One more time. Because I shanked a note there. I don't like to do that. So a good one to really try, you know, go at your own pace, go as slow as you need to go and really try to make that even timing because those are all eighth notes until the very last pluck, okay? So you're thinking one and two and three and four and, right? Okay. Cool, cool. All right, uh, so then we've got, uh, and Doug, don't hold back on the questions. I saw you uh, ask a question and then take it back. That's okay. I'll get to the questions. I like the questions, okay? <laughs> Exercise 1B, uh, exactly the same rhythm and uh, sta same string sets and everything. We're just going to change up the chords, okay? So this time I'm going to grab a C chord, but I'm also going to add a low G note to the C chord. So uh, you see this sometimes as C slash G which basically means C chord and then the slash and then the G 
adds a lower note or uh, a low root note to it that isn't the root of the chord. Which is, in this case, it's G, right? So uh, you can pluck this with the same fingers as what we did in the previous example. And then our chord that we're going to switch to is the upper part of an F bar chord. Okay, so third fret of the D, second fret of the G, barring down at the first fret of the top two strings. Okay. So going back to the C chord, let's see if we can put it together. Just get, getting it going nice and slow, getting those fingers going and, uh, you know, working on your technique a little bit and certainly the timing. This is a great example, a uh, great opportunity for you to just focus on steady timing. OK, we really want to try and burn that in as evenly as we can. That's going to do nothing but help us in everything else. Right. All right. So Doug's got a question. Uh, out of the gate, I use the thumb for the low E and D strings and fingers for the high strings. Your thoughts? Yeah. Okay, so what I was going to say was, uh, you know, I used in this warm-up, the idea is that uh, I want to warm up all of the fingers, uh, uh, you know, except the pinky. <laughs> and you could do that. You can uh, adjust this exercise to include the pinky if you want to. But, uh, you know, in my fingers, you know, because I don't play classical or any of that kind of stuff. So I find myself using uh, everything else but the pinky and then very reasonable. And as you'll see, as we go through this, the thumb moves on those low strings and it lets you use the stronger fingers for the top strings. Right. And that's totally OK. But what I, my, my point was, what I wanted to say is uh, I actually put the, the finger numbers um, on the tabs as a suggestion, if you don't know which fingers to, to try at first, okay? These are just a suggested sort of fingers for each string, okay? But by no means are they the only way to do this. So if you come across a way that's easier for you to do it or feels more natural for you to do it, by all means use it, okay? Because there is no right or wrong way to do this stuff. Uh, classical style acoustic guitar is a little bit more rigid as far as you know which fingers you need to use for certain things uh but for for the rest of the time for the rest of us on just a regular acoustic guitar it's kind of wide open to whatever feels the most natural for you okay so i give it there as a suggestion but by no means is it the only way to uh assign the fingers to those strings if that makes sense and as you'll see, the thumb get moves a lot. In a lot of these exercises, I feel it more natural to use that thumb bouncing around on the lower strings and using a few fingers up top. That's sort of the most common way that a lot of people play. So uh, those are my thoughts, hopefully. And thanks for that question. Uh, you know, I wanted to kind of cover all that uh, anyway. So I appreciate it. As always, keep the questions coming. Exercise two. Uh, progression in G major, starting with uh, an interesting voicing for E minor. By the way, for those joining uh, possibly late and uh, might be the first time for you, expand the description below the video. There's a link to the PDF that we are going through. All right, Glenn, welcome, welcome. Thanks for coming. All right. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a different voicing of E minor. Seventh fret of the A string, that's your E note, that's your root. And then you've got the G note, fifth fret of the D, and you're sort of doubling up on that note with the open G string, okay? Open B string. And then your pinky on the seventh fret on the top gives you a higher B note, uh, which just gives a kind of a, a nice uh, sort of different sound for the E minor rather than you know just the, the straight open chord, right? So let's look at this uh, particular uh, um, finger picking pattern. Okay, so I'm starting with the thumb on the A string and my ring finger on the top string, but then you see right away the thumb going up to get the D string right after. And then going for index finger, middle finger on the G and B string. 
and that's going to be our repeating finger picking pattern. Okay, so just stay on that at first, and we do repeat that in that first bar. So it's okay. So if you need to get this finger pick finger picking pattern under your fingers, stay on the first bar and just work that finger picker finger picking pattern in. I can't talk tonight. Uh, work it in as best you can to, so that you can get it a little more on autopilot when you start to change chords, okay? Slow as you need to. And again, these are all eighth notes once again. So one and two and three and four and try and make it as even as you can. Lots of repetition at slow speeds. You know, I say this every week, lots of repetition at slow speeds. And you do that and you'll find it easier and easier to, easier to be able to speed it up, okay? So that's the first bar, sort of two times through. That finger picking pattern, we're gonna slide down two frets. Nice little voicing right here for a D chord. You see, this is the C shape right here, open C shape, fifth fret of the A, fourth fret of the D, open G string, third fret of the B. That's just a C chord moved up two frets, and then my pinky up on the fifth fret, okay? It's a big C chord. All right, so, sorry. It's the D chord with an added G note, which means an add 11, D add 11, D major. So that G note is everything. It adds like that floaty kind of sound a lot. What's up, Fatih Kun? Welcome, welcome. And Alonzo, of course, thanks so much for joining tonight. Jason, what's going on? Good to see you. Same finger picking pattern. We're going to move that same chord shape down in the third bar. This is going to be a C chord. And you've got that high G note with your pinky, third fret of the high string onto it. Uh, which is just a variation of an open C, right? Same finger picking pattern. So let's put those three bars together. We're coming down E minor, D, C. Okay, final bar. Just a little bit of a difference there uh, with the low the low G note, third fret, now on the low string. And just grabbing an open G chord. And of course, you can grab it this way too if you want. But once again, coming up, thumb on the D string, index on the G, middle on the B string. And then that's a brush strum right there on the whole chord. I use my thumb, just kind of drag it on top of there. So that last bar. Put the whole thing together and add a little speed, see if we can do it. Okay. Once again, go as slow as you need to go to get it under your fingers. Uh, I'll reiterate, um, those are just suggested fingerings for which fingers for which string. It's not the only game in town as far as that goes. If you Stumble across something that feels more natural, feels easier for you, then by all means, do it, okay? Um, yeah, so uh, nice and slow, lots of repetition. Stay on one chord if you have to. Just keep it nice and relaxed and work on your timing with that as well, okay? Sound good. Excellent, okay. Uh, exercise 2B. Uh, descending progression. So uh, going to use the same general finger picking pattern, uh, but we're going to come down uh, those chords a little bit differently. Okay. Uh, so we're going to start this time on the upper part of an F bar chord. Now notice my suggested fingering on this has actually changed a little bit. Now I'm not going to use my ring finger on any of this. I'm going to still move the thumb. Right, starts on the D string, and I'm still going to use it on the G this time. So 
So that means that the top two strings can be assigned to the index in the middle. And this is a very common. And so what I'm going to do is going to end up using my middle finger when once we go to the C chord. Now we're sort of moving down to the A string, but also using the middle finger on the top two strings, right? So, so notice uh, F chord. When I go to the C chord. Okay, I've got the third fret of the A string, but still getting the middle finger on the top string for the chord. And then it's thumb, index, middle on the D, G, and B strings. Okay? All right, so I'm going F to C, and now I'm descending down. I'm going to go to a G over B shape, okay, which is uh, second fret of the A string, open D, open G string, third fret of the B string, okay? Now I don't have any other uh, notes on the high string, so I've just got that middle finger on the B string now. So you can see I'm, I'm descending down from C, G over B, and then heading into A minor. Very common moves right here. C to the G over B to the A minor, because you get this descending uh, bass note, right? Okay, so the first two bars. Okay. Now I'm gonna go to the G chord. Third fret of the low string, but I'm still going to do the top part of the chord on the D, G, and B string, and those are all open strings on the G chord. Okay. Going to a D over F sharp. Second fret of the low string. Then you've got the open D string, second fret of the G, third fret of the B. Another very common chord, right? And see how we're descending down from G to F sharp. And then in the last part, I'm going to go to the full F bar chord. Okay. And then brush stroke on the whole thing. So let's see if I can play it through for you. I'll go a little bit slow at first. Cool stuff. So, you know, what you'll find is that uh, a lot of times there's a repeated finger picking pattern that happens. And usually you're, you go through it once or twice on each chord. Okay. So stick with one chord until you have it down, until you feel like, you, you know, you, you, it's kind of burned in a little bit before you start introducing those chord changes. Because, uh, you know, if you're kind of working on two things at once, uh, there's a lot more sort of uh, ways for it to fall apart a lot for you. Okay. So I recommend just start with that initial finger picking pattern, stay on one chord, work it for, you know, two to five minutes until you feel comfortable with it, then start changing the chords with it. Okay. A lot of times it's exactly the same finger picking pattern. You might have to change the root notes, you know, cause they go to different strings and things like that. But for the most part, it's basically the same idea. If that makes sense. All right. Eddie, what's up? Good. Uh, Eddie Lamb. Good morning from Hong Kong. I love it. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, and Laura is here as well. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. HH, I would be glad to show you the D over F sharp chord again. So we've got a D up top. And basically all it is, is just the D power chord. Okay. So it's open D string, second fret of the G, third fret of the B. Okay. And then we're going to put uh, index finger, second fret of the low string and curl it to mute the A string. Okay. You actually don't really even have to mute the A string. It's a common way to play it to keep it nice and focused sounding. 
you but you can't a is in the chord so you could if you wanted to add the a chord but notice this right like an open d chord okay there's the f sharp note second fret of the high string all you're really doing is sort of cutting you know taking that note out of it and putting a low f sharp note in there now i do it with my thumb do it with your thumb if you want to as well and so, of course, why this works well is in situations where you've got a G chord and maybe you want to get to E minor, right? So you've got that bass motion coming down. Though you want, like, a D, you know, if you went. Okay. So, yeah, the finger placement on it is all, you know, I use the index finger. I start with the index finger on the second fret of the low string. And so that leaves middle finger on the second fret of the G, ring finger, third fret of the B. Now, you can use any combination of your available fingers left to do it, or also a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of players can do the full D chord and wrap the thumb around, okay? So there's a lot of different ways to do it. The way I always end up doing it is just the index finger is on that low note and that leaves the middle and ring two top notes make sense hh windsor what's up hello hello uh doug let's see mike seems repetition happens in so many different aspects of guitar thinking of playing lead and phrasing also use repetition absolutely so um you know we'll talk a little bit more about you know phrasing leads in more of the electric lessons uh hopefully talk a little bit about that but uh yeah, you think about licks that repeat, right? To build tension, right? Um, also just repetition in playing phrases and just changing certain little uh, details of them, right? To sort of create a thematic approach. Absolutely, 100%. All right, you with me? <laughs> we got two, two exercises. We're gonna blow through it. Okay, exercise three. Yes, speaking of highway song, there it is. The D over F sharp. So many songs using that chord. So well worth for getting onto it. Okay. Uh, so exercise 3A. Let me go back a bit. Uh, we're going to do some triads here. And so this is a, a pretty straight ahead um, triplet finger picking approach where you're staying on the same string set. So really, you know, this is a lot sort of more straight ahead for you to kind of build in. Uh, this. There's not a lot of tricky, uh, you know, sort of transitions. Once you have it, you pretty much have it. And it's all about the chord shapes moving. Uh, so what I want to show you is a descending chord progression. Okay. If you want to, you could think of uh, sort of the end set part of Stairway to Heaven or, you know, where it's A minor, G, F. Okay. That kind of thing, right? Um, one cool thing that you can do on the guitar using triads is you can actually play that chord progression, but actually move the chords up the neck, even though the progression is moving downwards, right? Like your, your bass is moving down in whole steps, right? A, G, F. And we, we can do something like this. is using triads to go A minor, G, F. But I'm moving up the neck, so the sort of overall sound of those chords is ascending, even though the bass or the other instruments are going to be descending through that. What That adds a lot of really cool, opens up a lot of cool sounding stuff, I think, right? So... So this is a, this exercise was designed to so, sort of show you that approach and how cool it is and how it can unlock a lot of different things, but also show you the, the power of triads and also get you to familiar with the triad shapes, as I always try to do. 
if in fact they're new to you, right? So I'm grabbing the D, G, and B strings, okay? And those three strings or that string set has a, a number of shapes that uh, you can move up and down the neck with the same chords. So we're starting off with a, one of the minor shapes, okay? And you can see it based out of a full A minor open chord, right? But I'm just arpeggiating or finger picking it, thumb, index, middle, D, G, and B strings through the chord a couple times, right? Moving up to a G triad is sort of the next spot up the neck. So you're moving up two frets and you've got five, four, and three in the D, G, and B. Okay, and that comes out of the full G major bar chord. But uh, at its core, you've got the G on the bottom, B, which is the third in the middle, and the D is the fifth up top there. And then you've got an inversion of the F chord two frets up even further. So the seventh fret of the D, fifth fret of the G, sixth fret of the B string, okay? Now it turns out from there, you can just change one note and end up back on an A minor triad. So we've got this shape, seventh fret of the D, barring down on the fifth fret of the G and B string. And you that shape comes out of, right? The full A minor bar chord, fifth position. Now moving up to G, we've got that same shape that we used for F in the previ previously. And then ending up on F, you end up on a shape that just you bar down at the 10th fret on the D, G, and B string. Okay. So. Make sense? And you can keep going, right? You can figure out the next set of shapes, which I didn't tab out, right? But you've got A minor right here, 10, 9, 10 on the D, G, and B. You've got G at the 12th fret, all three strings. And then you've got uh, 15, 14, 13 on the D, G, and B. And then it just repeats in octaves after that, right? So I end up back where we were, an octave higher. Okay? Uh, the finger picking is very... So a good way to burn in sort of that. Uh, similar exercise here, exercise 3B. This time it's not a progression uh, that uh, um, descends down and we're ascending the triads. This time it, we're just going through the triad shape sta starting on D minor and then coming down with A minor. And this time I've chosen to use the top three strings. So the G, B, and high E string, okay? So we've got, all right, D, mi uh, D minor shape coming out of that D, uh, D minor uh, open chord, but just the top three strings, same finger picking pattern, right? Okay, and then moving up to seven, six, and five, still D minor, but we've rearranged the notes and then barring down at the 10th fret, okay? Uh, and that's D minor as well, okay? So that's the first two bars if we go. Okay, now from up here, I'm not gonna change to A minor. Okay, so that's the shape we started with for D minor, but now it's up here at the ninth, 10th, and eighth fret of the top three strings. Coming down with it to the fifth fret, and then ending off an open position, second, first, and open uh, string there on the G, B, and high E. Okay, so playing through that whole exercise. Huh. Whoops. again. Okay. You with me on it? Excellent. Excellent. Exercise four. Okay. Uh, what do we got? Laura, <laughs> for every hour of boot camp, there's three hours on my own. <laughs> 
Excellent. Yes. And uh, oh, yeah, the other thing I wanted to say on this, um, these exercises are meant for you to uh, hopefully be inspired to experiment a little bit. OK, so yes, learn the exercises, but also mess around with them. Change the chords, change the string sets, see how much mileage you can get out of each exercise. OK. Is that can open up a whole bunch of stuff uh, that you discover, you know, sort of thinking about some of these things. OK. <laughs> Exercise four. All right. Uh, adding some pull offs. OK. So uh, just using a couple chords here, um, starting off with an A minor chord. Seventh fret of the D barring down the fifth fret of the top three strings. And once again, I've got. Uh, now I've chosen to do thumb on the D string, uh, index on the G, uh, middle on the B, and then my ring finger on the top string. And I'm going to pull off from the seventh fret to the fifth fret of the high string. And at the same time, pluck the uh, root note with my, th with my thumb at the seventh fret of the D string. And then uh, I'm going to sort of repeat that without the root note, going up one fret with my pinky to the eighth fret and pull off to the fifth fret. So I'm pulling off from seven to five on that uh, first string. One more time. Oops, I need to do that one more time. What's the pull off, right? You're gonna work on your pinky, which is, you know, sort of the, the weakest link as far as pull offs and hammer -ons. And you wanna just sort of pluck the string as you pull it downwards off the, off the fretboard so that it makes the note underneath ring, okay? Then I'm going to move it up three frets and do a C major. So this 10th fret of the D, 9th fret of the G, barring down on the 8th fret of the top two strings. Okay. And same idea. Pinky's going to be pulling off from the 10th fret of the high string to the 8th fret and then the 12th fret. So there's a little bit of a uh, stretch there. So put it together. Find that's going to be a have to, you're going to have to shake that out afterwards a little bit, right? So, uh, good work on the stamina there, bar chords, pull offs. And again, you can start working on you know other things, right? Like off of open chords. Those kind of things. That's the idea. I just happened to do it. Happen to choose to do it with bar chords. So yeah, you're gonna be shaking those hands out on it. All right. <laughs> Little bursts. Exercise five, uh, descending riff. Uh, you might recognize this one, Al Roundabout. Excellent, Doug. I love your comment. Thanks so much. I appreciate that a lot. Awesome. Uh, Doug saying that uh, the lessons here have helped to venture out to parts are parts unknown and mix it up on the fretboard. That's what we're trying to do. So excellent, excellent, love it. All right, let's see if I can play through this exercise five. Uh, you might recognize it. <clears throat> Let me hit it. Try to hit it again here. Uh, so a little bit classical in nature, right? I've got another sort of classical thing coming up in a bit. 
but lots of stuff going on here. That first bar is very uh, melodic, using some hammer-ons and pull-offs, and uh, you know, just outlining two chords really, just a D going to a C. Okay, but playing some notes up top. So I'm just going to play the thumb on the open D string at the same time. I'm going to hit the second fret of the high string. And so this outlines the D chord without me actually playing the D chord. Okay, so I'm going to, go, I'm going to let that D string ring out. And then you've got second, third, pulling off to second pulling off to the open. So a hammer on from two to three, and then pull offs, three to two, two to open. Okay, so. Okay, so after that, I'm grabbing the third fret of the A string and I'm gonna now move to the C chord, but start with an E note up top, open E string, then go into the third fret of the B, first fret of the B pulling off to open. So that first bar. One more time. Okay. Now in the second bar, um, it sort of takes the same shape, kind of descending through some chords. Mess that up. Okay. Somehow this one's easy. I love it. Laura, you, you take those ones when they're easy. Okay. So outlining a B minor. You've got the second fret of the A string, third fret of the B, fourth fret of the G. And I'm just grabbing it with the middle finger and the thumb at first. And then the index finger is note by itself we're adding on to it I move down that same shape to the open position so i've got the open a okay. playing out of a minor and playing out of g so same strings up top but i've got to come down to the g note okay uh on the low string And then this is kind of a tough one. We're actually outlining a D over F sharp, but it's more this shape that we're sort of outlining, which is the C chord up two frets and then adding in the second fret bar underneath it. Um, so I recommend just, you know, sort of barring down at the second fret and just putting the fourth fret on the D. Okay, so you've got... that and then the open E at the end, okay? Just with a, a thumb brush stroke. <laughs> okay, so let's see what we got here. Jake, when I pull off from the high E, the string catches on the callus and makes the twanging sound. Yeah, so that's... Making that as clean as you can should be a total uh, area of focus, right? And sometimes we do get that twangy kind of unclean sound on it, right? So it's about just isolating that and figuring out a way that you can get it as cleanly as you can. Okay. See, sometimes I, uh, I tend to get a little aggressive with the strings or whatever, and I can make it, you know, you kind of get that kind of thing happen, which isn't quite as pure sounding as if you're intentional with it. So maybe just a little bit of a lighter touch. And if you can get, you know, just practice that over and over and, and just really focus on, you know, getting part of the flesh that's not gonna make it kind of twang out a little bit, you know, whether it's the side of the finger or whatever and just try to make it as pure as you can and build it in, right? All right. What key are we in here? We're in the key of, hmm, 
So it's a trick question. Um, <clears throat> I know that we've had uh, a few of you on here that, that are on here a lot, um, trying to figure out what key we're in, trying to figure out what the chord set is. Um, this, this is in a key um, until the very last bar, it sort of steps out of the key. <laughs> there's a little bit of modal interchange that happens uh, on that last chord, but everything else fits to a, a nice key here. So what would be a, uh, a quick way to think about um, finding out what key? It really, when you look at this, um, some of the clues that can help you figure out the key is it's basically based on how well do you know the chord set in the key. So um, if you're thinking a minor key, right? You want to think, okay, one, four, and five, those are minor chords. And then the second chord would be a, uh, the two chord would be, uh, you know, some sort of a, a diminished chord. And then you've got the flat six, the flat seven, and the flat three chords that are the major chords, right? So if you kind of know that, and if you look at this chord, I'm looking at this chord progression, uh, you know, with the chord names, on top of the um, the tabs, and I, I'm seeing D, C, B minor, A minor, G, D, F, or F sharp, E. The first thing that jumps out is B minor, A minor, okay? That's one step apart, A minor and B minor. So if you immediately think to yourself, oh, what if that's a four and a five chord in a minor key? Because if you think about the chord set in a minor key or even a major key, right? Um, those minors are right beside each other, okay? A step apart, the four and the five chord, right? So immediately I'm thinking, is this an E minor? Because B minor and A minor are two chords right beside each other, a step apart. And so it would fit if, if B minor is the five chord, A minor is the four chord, that would mean that we're in the key of E minor. And so if you check every other chord, those chords work. Okay, except the E chord at the end is an E major. Okay, so in fact, this is uh, in the key of E minor, but there's a modal chain interchange right at the end that goes that resolves to an E major, and this is called a Picardy third. This is a classical uh, thing where they don't want to end a, a song sounding sad, like kind of minor, so they just change it to a major chord suddenly it sounds happy right so that's what's going on there but really i just want to point out for those of you who think about the chord sets in a certain key if you look at the b minor and a minor a step apart that should tell you right away Ooh, is that the five and four chord in a minor key and then go and try uh see what if the other chords fit in that sort of uh you, you know that chord set for the key if that makes sense. I know that was advanced and I even got a comment. Is this an advanced group? Sometimes I branch off and I do that. I try to keep it as beginner and intermediate as I can, but I just, I wanted to throw that out there because I get this question from time to time. How can we figure out what key we're in? So that's how I would do it on that one, okay? All right. Uh, Doug's asking, do you think Steve Howe thought this out with the theory venturing with or venturing with his ears and fingers? Probably a little bit of both. He seems like a real schooled player. So there's probably a little bit of both going on, I would think. <laughs> okay. Uh, you noticed you're using no pick. No, I'm not using a pick. It's finger picking tonight. Finger picking boot camp. All right. <laughs> All right, glad to bring you all back with a little bit of roundabout. By the way, that, that is not a note-for-note -note rendition. We do have the note-for-note -note version on Guitar Tricks. I believe it's still up there. So uh, check it out if you want to dive into it. All right? Exercise six, let me play through it, and, uh, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. And once again, I'm using the thumb, moving the thumb, A and then D strings, and then index finger on the G, uh, middle finger on the B string here, okay? So... Oh, whoops. And that's exercise six. First thing that I forgot to note to, to tell you is that we've switched the time signature to three four. 
So it's one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. So cool chord shapes here. Once again, using an open string to kind of tie it all together. We've got an open G string throughout all these shapes. And if you look at it, we're sort of shelling out major and minor chords root five. Okay, but we've got starting with a, what would be a G major chord in the 10th position with the root on the A string, but just fingering it so that we've got the open G string ringing out. Okay. Okay, once again, starting with a pluck on the outside notes. And then just cycling through a G string, D string, G string, B string, G string. Moving that same shape down to the fifth fret. Okay, that's going to be a D major with a G with an open G string. So it gives it that airy sound. Then I'm going to venture out and move that up to the eighth fret, same shape, which would be an F major with an open G string, which gives it sort of that add nine thing, right? And then a C chord that open string okay which just turns out to be a regular c chord now if i come up to the seventh fret i'm shelling out an e minor bar chord but again opening it up for the, for the open g string which is actually in the chords sounds really nice if i move it down to b minor and that g string adds an extended note that's kind of cool right changes the quality of that and then if I go to the open A you end up with A dominant 7 to end it off so I quite like this one and what I like about it is that once again each bar has the same finger picking pattern and really you're moving a lot of the same shape around um, just around the neck a little bit Tried to go a little bit too fast. I got to practice that one, right? Get those chord changes in nice and clean. So I think that's a cool one to, uh, you know, show you, you know, take a chord shape and, and maybe just make one of the strings open and just see how many chords you can come up with that sound cool with an open string on it that would normally just be a bar chord, right? Uh, and then you'll, you'll find lots of cool sounding stuff, hopefully. All right. Exercise seven, uh, getting back to the classical melody. Once again, we are sticking with three, four time signature. I still have the one, two, three, two, three. These are eighth notes, one and two and three and that kind of thing. Um, so I've got a thumb on the root notes, which are gonna be on the low E, also the A string, okay? And playing sort of a melody on the top string. And there's just two chords. If you look at this one, uh, first two bars, E minor, uh, third bar, we go to B7, B dominant seventh, and then back to E minor in the last bar. Let's see if I can play this one. We'll talk a little bit about it. All right, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, in, in this case, I'm actually using the middle finger on the top two strings so, and bringing the thumb up to the G string. Uh, no, I'm not bringing the thumb up. I've got the middle finger on the top two strings, index finger on the G string, so... Okay. Uh, one more time. Cool little melody, right? You've just got like a... But you're arpeggiating the chords around it. So, you know, for the E minor, since we've got the top three strings and the low string, we don't really need to fret anything. And we can, so we can freely add kind of the... And it's nice to add in that slide up to the seventh fret. Slide down, right? 
Now in this case, I'm actually grabbing the whole B dominant seventh open chord. Okay, we're only arpeggiating some of that, and finger picking some of that. And I gotta move my pinky, second, third, second there on that. Cool. Classical Spanish style could be. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, let's see. Steve saying definitely have to circle back on this stuff tonight, but that helped on Dave's lesson for Wednesday. Excellent. Right on, right on, right on. <laughs> What's up, Carl King in the house? Love it. All right, last, uh, we usually end off our finger picking boot camps with some sort of Travis picking. <clears throat> so I've got an ascending progression in exercise eight. For those of you first or for those of you who have joined us and do not know, expand the description, you get uh, the PDF for the tabs that we've gone through tonight. And of course, all of these streams live on the Guitar Tricks channel uh, forever and ever and ever. So you can always go back and watch these. Uh, at a later date. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to start off with uh, an open G chord. And in this case, uh, I'm going to take the shortcut where I'm just doing the root note because there's a lot of open strings. And we're going to learn some Travis picking here. And this is a little bit of a different, uh, you know, I'll usually, when I do these, I usually show the same pattern, just uh, playing different progressions. <clears throat> Um, first of all, Terry's asking what Travis picking refers to. It's it's sort of a finger picking pattern that was popularized in uh, the country realm uh, by a guy named Merle Travis. So they named it after after him, and it sort of has a little bit of a swing to it, and there's a certain shape to it um, where uh, it's used in just tons of uh, country songs, primarily, but uh, you know beyond that, folk, um, rock, all sorts of genres gets used, uh, but it's basically this picking pattern. If I'm gonna stay on the first bar, it's gonna sound like. Uh, slow it down. Okay. And what's going on is that uh, we're holding it down with the thumb. And in this case, hitting octaves for the G root. Okay. And then using some other fingers to add in some notes to flesh it out a little bit. Okay. So this particular one, uh, if I play this slow and go through it, it's going to look like this. speed it up a little bit but once again uh you gotta learn to walk before you run so stay on one chord burn in that pattern okay okay in this case it's all eighth notes except that very last pluck you're gonna let that ring out for a full beat the fourth beat okay the second bar I'm staying with that G chord, but I'm moving the bass note to B. So that's the major third of G, second fret of the A string. Okay. But exactly the same finger picking pattern. The thumb moves to the A string instead. Now I'm moving to a C chord, okay? Same fingers everywhere. And then just sliding that shape up and adding the pinky onto the fifth fret of the G string makes it a D dominant seventh, which is a uh, common way to play the five chord in a progression like this, is to make it a dominant seventh chord. Right? You got it? <laughs> What's up, Joseph? 
you made it, and that's the important part. So uh, roll it back, and you got it. You got this, all right? Uh, Doug Smith, Chet Atkins, the country gentleman, check it out. Yeah, he took the Travis picking thing to a whole new level. So absolutely. Uh, Nikki the Dog's asking, Mike, who does the vocals on Guitar Tricks? <clears throat> uh, most of it, 95% of the male vocals on Guitar Tricks uh, is a guy by the name of John Statham, uh, who is the man of a thousand voices. He really, he really does his best to try and slip into sounding like who he is uh, singing, right? And I think most of the time he does a pretty good job with that. Uh, so he does a lot of those. Um, there's a few songs on there that actually I've done the vocals on, which I'm not going to disclose that at this time. But there are a few that uh, I'm in there a little bit. I'm in there on some backing vocals on some stuff. And uh, there's an artist by the name of Jay Lauren who did a lot of the female stuff. Uh, and we also had uh, another female vocalist, Kate Strand, did a lot of stuff early on. <clears throat> She's great as well. Uh, so those are the singers. And uh, there were a few uh, male vocalists that, depending on what the song was, we sort of changed it up sometimes here and there. But uh, most of it was a guy named uh, um, John Statham. And yeah, Steve asked, someone did a great job on Funky Broadway. That was that was John Statham. So there you go. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, everybody, thanks so much for uh, jumping on, as always, spending your Friday with me. I appreciate it. Appreciate the engagement, the comments, hanging out. We'll be back on the electric next week. Same time. Whoa, almost ate it here in the chair. It's crazy. I've got this little footstool down here and it failed me for a second. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see here. Russ, I appreciate the kind words. Thank you so much, Eddie. Thank you. Uh, Laura, thanks so much. <clears throat> Doug is asking, how do I join Guitar Tricks and get, get us? Expand the description. Follow the links. I think you get a free trial. Check it out, my man. Sign up. Get a username going and, uh, and get on the site and, and poke around. You'll get like a, uh, a free trial, I believe, to new users. All right? Scott, thank you so much. Terry, thank you. Theodore, thank you. Gr Glenn, <laughs> thank you. Zane, we'll see you. Nikki the dog, thank you. HH, thanks so much. I appreciate the kind words. MA, thank you. Windsor, peace out. Back at you. Jake99, thank you. Doug, thanks. Larry, thanks so much. Alonzo, thank you. You have a great weekend. Back at you. Thanks, Rad Flying V. Jason, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. <laughs> Stay safe. Yeah, especially in the studio here. It's crazy. It's a death trap in here. Jody1, thank you. HH, thanks for the kind words. Steve, have a great weekend. Back at you. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, Jim. Gregory, Doug, thank you as always. Steve, thank you. Chris, thank you so much, guys and girls and everybody. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Next week. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. See ya. Cheers. See you later.